Welcome back to Valencia for the Moto3 Junior World Championship. We had uh, a race earlier on today with Yuki, with Yuki Kuni winning from uh, a host of other riders. But uh, for all these riders in the Moto3 field, Dennis Onchu is trying to bounce back from the disappointment of a technical failure in race one. And uh, Kuni's going to make sure that he's able to try and maintain his winning form. And uh, you can see the highlights from race one. Cooney was on pole position from Anshu. You can see technical problem on the grid once again for the number 65, Hikari Arita. But uh, off the line, you can see that Dennis Anshu was able to make a great start on the number 53 machine to get in front of Yuki Cooney. Those two riders would stretch out a lead in the early stages of the race and have a real battle all the way through this race before that technical failure for Dennis Anshu. Behind them, though, a leading group of six riders all coming together and having a real scratch all the way through the race to be able to fight with one another for the podium spots. That was Billy Van Erde just fighting a little bit too aggressively with some of the other riders. This was Billy Van Erde's debut in the CEV Moto3 Championship after missing the opening round of the year through injury. But for Dennis Anshu, he was out in front. But uh, from underneath him, the Czech rider, Filip Rechek, crashed out of the race. This was the race leading move from Yuki Kuni to get down the inside into the final corner. He would lead the rest of the race, but he was under pressure throughout from Dennis Anshu before Anshu's technical failure. And this was the scrap for the other podium spots. We had Danny Halgado on the number 96 was able to have a really strong performance on his debut in the Moto3 class, which crashes up and down the field. But in this fight for third position, it would be a really tight, close, clean scrap to be able to try and fight with one another. I doubt it was too much clean language from Dennis Anshu, though, once he had this technical failure. Anshu from second position out of the race. He hasn't scored points in the opening two races of the CEV Moto3 Championship, and now he needs to try and bounce back in race two and try and fight for the race victory once again. That race victory went to the number 33 of y Yuki Kuni, and uh, behind him, though, it was all about the scrap for second position. These riders all changing positions lap after lap. As uh, Cooney came across the line to, change, to claim that race victory, it was the number 52 of Alcoba that got down the inside to get those 20 points for second, just in front of Davide Pizzoli. And uh, then the rookie Halgado would finish in fourth position. So keep an eye out for the number 96 in race two here at Valencia. Yuki Kuni able to claim his second race victory in the CEV Moto3 Championship. Is he going to be able to back it up with a second victory of the day here in race two? Kuni's going to start from pole position here in Valencia. Can he convert it once again in the Moto3 class? The riders now making their way to the grid under a perfect blue sky. Perfect conditions here for these riders. Steve English and Fran Wilde guiding you through the Moto3 action here at Valencia and Fran. For Yuki Kuni, he was really strong all the way through that race. He certainly was. Like we said, he was pushed by Dennis Onchu, but uh, certainly even if uh, that had come down to a duel that Onchu had won, Kuni nevertheless showing his incredible pace here. Uh, but in the end, the Japanese rider was absolutely perfect at the front, immovable, and then unfortunately that technical trouble for Onchu uh, meant we didn't see a duel quite to the end of the race. But uh, yeah, the young tech, I'm sure, will be looking to bounce back pretty quickly after, yeah, bit of a heartbreaking season opener for him in Estoril, crash, that was uh, more his fault, and then now uh, compounding it, a technical problem in the first race here, so uh, yeah, desperately needing points is uh, young Dennis Anshu, but uh, second on the grid, so uh, should be able to take a good haul if all goes well this afternoon in race two. Yeah, Dennis Anshu, we should be able to see him really scrap it out at the front, he's going to be more motivated than we've seen him as well, and he's always combative at the best of times, you can see how good the conditions are here in Valencia 21 degrees and uh, while the sun's out I'll tell you what Fran the sunburn was out as well for me I was absolutely roasted yesterday the weather conditions absolutely perfect very different from back at home I was quite glad to come out from Ireland <laughs> to the south of Spain for this race yeah, and you can see Yuki Kuni uh, probably still uh, walking on uh, some air after that uh, win this morning. So, yeah, really, really good show from him. And, uh, yeah, after that tough uh, opener at Estoril, as you can see, 18, so no points for the Japanese rider there. But he is one of those you'd expect to be challenging for this title this year. A uh, 16-year-old uh, took a race win last year in Jerez and uh, now immediately a winner from round two this season. Yeah, and then... 
Estoril, he did struggle to just try and come back through the field. He actually qualified all right inside the top 10, but with the weather conditions deteriorating on Sunday, just got caught out by those wet conditions. So he's going to start from pole position in front of this man, Dennis Onchu. Of course, we know the Onchu brothers and uh, Can Onchu, the youngest ever Grand Prix race victor. His brother, Dennis, of course, a former Asia Talent Cup champion. He was second in the Red Bull rookies as well, Fran. He's chasing those first points this season. They have to come today. Yeah, I think they really do. And uh, yeah, you can see looking pretty focused down there. And like you said, his brother, the youngest ever Grand Prix winner and now full-time Moto3 rider, uh, able to enter and become uh, the youngest ever winner last year by virtue of being the Rainies, Re Rainies? the reigning <laughs> Red Bull Rookies Cup champion. So uh, if you are the reigning junior Moto3 world champion or Red Bull Rookies Cup champion, you are allowed to compete in the Moto3 world championship at the age of 15. Uh but uh, Dennis not quite getting that honor yet. So uh, being forced to wait a bit longer. And uh, Jeremy Alcoba, 17, so a little bit older, and uh, yeah, was on the podium this morning. Pretty solid race for him. But uh, I'm interested to see a second time round. He seemed to get a good initial start off the line and then just wasn't able to really uh, get his elbows out into turn one. Seems to lose out a little bit. Um, so it should be pretty interesting to see if he can make a better start of it this time around. Yeah, Alcoba struggled a little bit once he was trying to get through to the front of those groups. Didn't actually have the pace to be able to set the pace for that group to make sure they were able to keep the race leaders honest. But he was always able to get himself through to the front. This is Stefano Nepa. And uh, for Nepa, he actually fell to the back of that group fighting for the podium in race one. So he's going to try and bounce back from... Well, it was a bit of a disappointment for him in that opening race because he's one of the riders from with lots of experience. A dozen starts in the Moto3 World Championship. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, from Mugello on, I believe it was last season, uh, including, of course, Valencia. So uh, Grand Prix level experience uh, at this track. And of course, when you do get that experience uh, in the World Championship, it's not just about your race result or about race day. Uh, you get an awful lot of sessions to uh, yeah gain that more experience and obviously be amongst that very different field and that really high level of competition. So uh, there's a lot of value to that. And uh, the likes of uh, yeah Nepa and then uh, this guy here, Yamanaka, as well, uh, did the opening round round of this season with the Australia Galicia 00 team in Moto3, replacing Sergio Garcia, who's the permanent rider for that team in Moto3 World Championship this season, but was too young to take part in Qatar. So uh, Yamanaka got a run out there. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, another one of those had a bit of a tough season opener, but uh, sixth in race one earlier today. So a pretty good start for him here in Valencia. Yeah, Yamanaka, of course, a former Red Bull Rookies race winner as well. And uh, you mentioned that he raced in the opening race of the year in Moto3 because his teammate was too young. He's got a young teammate as well in this class, Danny Halgado on the 96. Halgado missed the opening round of the year because he was too young. He's actually on the third row of the grid and finished in fourth in race one. So keep an eye out for him. This is David Salvador, Salvador of course. And for Salvador, Fran, he's going to be racing in the Red Bull Rookies as well this year. Yeah, he's uh, the rider chosen by a uh, Dorner and Red Bull backed promotion program to uh, yeah one of the riders who finishes in the top three of the etc gets the chance to race in the red bull rookies and it's david salvador who was chosen this season and uh yeah so be interesting to see what he can do now but to uh, him and reigning etc champion xavier artigas and then obviously as well daniel holgado like we said making a big impression here on their debuts in moto3 junior world championships yeah re really yeah. impressive to make that step up from the etc it's a, yeah, it's a fairly big step between the two, obviously. So for those guys, they'll take an awful lot of heart from uh, yeah, quite how quickly they've hit the ground running. And obviously, the likes of uh, Barry Baltus made that leap last year, and now he's again showing uh, after he won that race in Estoril a little bit longer to uh, get up to that level. But uh, another one who's uh, really impressed as well in uh, the Moto3 class. Yeah, Barry able to finish inside the top 10 as well in the opening race of the day here in Valencia. This is Davide Pizzoli, who we saw on the podium in that opening race as well, finished in third position. So for Pizzoli, a former Supersport World Championship rider as well, lots of experience for him just making that step to the Moto3 class. He'll start on the, four, on the uh, third row of the grid in seventh position, just in front of Danny Halgado, who we should see next. And uh, for Halgado on that number 96 machine, he, it was his birthday yesterday. He was able to make the step up to the Moto3 class. And he looked really impressive as well, Fran, in that opening race. Yeah, for sure. Like I think we've uh, we've given him a fair bit of airtime so far. But it is all very, very deserved for the young Spaniard. 
definitely, like we said, there's a fairly big step between the ETC and the Moto3 Junior World Championship. But uh, yeah, Holgado doing himself proud there and so, so close to the podium. You know, it wasn't a fourth place with a sort of five second gap ahead of him. It was uh, very much in the mix there, right to the line and just, just missing out on that first ever podium. Yeah, there's no favourites in the commentary box, but uh, I think everyone wanted to see Halgado actually stand on that podium because it was so impressive for a rookie to come in and do what he did to be able to put himself into that position. Really good stuff from him on the number 96. Keep an eye out for him. This is Carlos Tate on the number 99 machine, the 15-year-old from Valencia. And uh, he was, of course, finished inside the top six in Estoril. He was a front row starter in Estoril. We saw in the uh, opening race as well, Fernando just had that problem and... Uh, lost a lot of ground in those early laps yeah it's uh yeah i'm sure tatai will be one of those names a little bit further up come uh, line crossing time in the second race of the day but uh, yeah another one of those with the uh, red bull rookies experience and uh here we have a guy we've mentioned a few minutes ago, Xavier Artigas, reigning European Talent Cup champion. The rider whose number and letters I'm finding it increasingly difficult to remember. I'm still in last year's mood. Here we see the 43. You see, I walked past these guys on my way in this morning, confused me further. But uh, yeah, that's it. Number 24, Leopard machine now for Artigas. And he's another who's been very, very impressive. And uh, here we have uh, Matteo Bertelli, another one to move up. One of these two guys, Botelli and teammate Pataka, is, uh, yeah, they've, uh, you know, team boss Paolo Simoncelli thinks a lot of these two talents and uh, certainly everything we've seen from them so far, that seems very justified. So it'd be interesting to see what he can do now as they continue gaining experience. And I uh, have to uh, see here, is Cuny, yeah, all good. Just a little bit stressed there, but I think he's just pumping himself up rather than panicking. So uh, all good down there for the pole sitter. And, uh, yeah, should be another good race here, I think. Yeah, and Dennis Onchu just trying to get himself pumped up as well as he takes that second spot on the grid. You can see the grid starting to clear, and it is Yuki Cooney on pole position. And uh, Cooney, of course, now a two-time race winner in the CEV Moto3 class. He's going to start from pole position once again, just in front of Dennis Onchu. Onchu trying to get his first points of the season. And Jeremy Alcoba was second in race one. He was, and then Nepa, Yamanaka, and Salvador on row two. Pizzoli was a podium man in race one. Danny Halgado finished fourth. And then you've got Carlos Tate on that third row of the grid on the number 99 machine. And then moving on to row four, reigning European Cup champion Xavier Artigas, Matteo Batelli and Aleish View. Look out for View, maybe see a bit more from him today. Jose Garcia was a podium man in Estoril. Jason DePasquier finished inside the top ten in race one. And uh, Noguchi is up there on that fifth row of the grid. And then we have Fernandez, Ryu and... Uh, almost can't hear myself think as they pull away there and a Japanese rider Hikaru Arita who sadly did not make that first start yeah hopefully we'll be able to see Arita make the start cleanly this time he's actually missed it for the opening two races of the year you can see as you come down that field plenty of other riders down there including the likes of Max Cook and uh, of course Max Cook and Billy Van Erde coming through the talent cup system in Asia for Billy Van Erde as the reigning ATC champion and for Max Cook as a podium man in the British talent cup and now as the field make their way around Valencia have a look at some of the corners around here because there's lots of places you can try and make a move in these Moto3 classes and the key places down in towards this corner at turn 6 you can try and be aggressive down the inside into turn 6 we've seen plenty of moves through there but Fran we've also seen plenty of mistakes in the opening races of the weekend here down in towards the next corners at turn 8 at the end of that back straight yeah definitely we've seen plenty of incidents so far and uh, yeah plenty of uh, fairly feisty moves from a few of these guys and especially in the ETC as well uh, but yeah some, some really good stuff and you can see in those championship standings there quite how close it is um, after these uh, two opening races of the year so Cooney now uh, really starting to home in on the top there by virtue of that win here but uh, the heroes from Estoril still very much in the mix yeah and that's what gives the likes of Dennis Onchu a lot of confidence that he can still recover from this on the 53 you can see him there on the Red Bull IOKTM and uh, for the Turkish rider he now knows the importance of trying to score 25 points in this race put yourself back in contention yeah exactly like you said um, Cooney obviously uh, didn't score at all in Estoril and already right back up there in the fight after that first race so uh, 
by no means over for Anchu, and uh, yeah, plenty of time to get some points on the board, but I'm sure he'll be hoping that starts now. Yeah, you can see Yuki Kuni there on the 33. He's going to make his way through to that pole position. Barry Baltos on that number seven. He was the race victor in Estoril. Managed to come through to finish inside the top ten during the opening race of the weekend here, but Baltos is going to start from the seventh row of the grid. Kuni's on pole from Dennis Anchu, who we saw have that heartbreak in race one. That is Dennis Anchu on the 53. He had a technical failure in race one. Still hasn't scored points through this season, and uh, he's going to start from the middle of that front row of the grid. That's Jeremy Alcoba. Alcoba looks keen. <laughs> he looks he looks keen. He looks ready, and he looks like he wants to make sure he's able to finish on that podium once again. The red lights come on. It's Cooney on pole position. Clean start from all of the front row, and it looks like from the second row of the grid, it looks like it's one of the Australia Galicia bikes has had a really good start. That'll be Yamanaka. But down on the run into turn one, it's once again the 53 of Dennis Anshu that gets to the front from Alcoba, and you can see the race one victor Yuki Kuni just trying to run around the outside of Alcoba as well as the field comes through turn one a few riders having just to run wide on the curbs through there Kuni's trying to run around the outside of Alcoba on the number 33 machine but has he ran in a bit too fast through that corner Alcoba's going to try and answer back down in towards turn three Alcoba's hold on to second position yeah that was pretty brave from Kuni there around the outside of Alcoba probably uh, not too brave because he is a veteran runner not too much risk doing that but uh, certainly into turn one all the way around the outside of so many riders that could have uh, been a bit risky for the Japanese rider but he's already making a move there to obviously try and chase down Onchu so at the moment it's as we were in race one with uh, Kuni I'm sure now eager to try and uh, clear Alcoba as quickly as possible but the Spaniard's certainly not making it easy for him. Yeah Alcoba with the inside line down in towards turn eight and Alcoba's able to hold on to that second position so while Kuni's able to make the moves he's not able to hold on to the position and Kuni's still down in third position at these early stages of the race number 33 of course race victor from race one this morning and it just putting that pressure onto Alcoba. Runs in a little bit too hot there for Yuki Kuni. And out in front, though, Dennis Onchu. Really good start, but a big crash in the background. And uh, it looks like it could be one of the Angel Nieto bikes that is down. And it looks like it's Tepasquia as well. And also Max Cook, the British Talent Cup rider. That could be the 73 of Koffler that's gone down there. But a big crash coming through. Turns 11 onto that short shoot. And uh, easily done in the early stages of this race. Once it's congested like that, you can find yourself just uh, in a bit too close proximity to anyone else. So a big crash there on the opening lap of the race. But for the race leaders, it's Anchu from the 33 of Yuki Kuni. And uh, the 99 trying to get down the inside. That's Carlos Tate trying to bounce back from a disappointing opening race of the weekend. Yeah, and you can see now Cooney just able to stay ahead there into turn one. I expect now he'll probably start to... Oh, and a big moment for Dennis Anchu, and he's gone down out of the lead. Absolute heartbreaker twice in one day for the Turk. High side for Anchu, and he's down. He's holding his wrist there, just trying to make sure that he's able to get himself collected. That's Billy Van Erde that's gone down as well, and you can see the pain there for Anchu as well, as he's in... A, it's pretty clear how much pain he's in, as he came down very heavily on what could be that collarbone for Anchu three races no points for the man that came into this season as the championship favourite that is massive disappointment for Dennis Anshu at the front of the field though it is Cooney from Alcoba that's leading the way and Alcoba every time he gets overtaken Fran he's trying to make sure he's able to get himself back to the front yeah we saw that in race one it would seem he's aware he's not quite got the pace of the likes of Cooney and previously Anshu so uh, just trying to defend that and make sure he's in that podium fight but uh, it's saying on our timing screen incident at turn two riders involved 53 and 31 but uh, they were separate incidents for definite but it's uh, sad to see yeah both of the uh, last two years asia talent cup champions in the gravel but we'll uh, have to see the replay here watch on at the front you can see Anchu on the 53 out in front. He's going to just get on the gas and that rear end's going to slide around on him and it just absolutely egg beats him off the top and uh, it comes down heavily and you can see he's holding on to his wrist through there as well and uh, it looks like Anchu's just doing what he can to either try and get back onto that bike or just the frustration from it for Anchu but it's pretty clear that he had been beaten up a, a little bit in that crash. Billy Van Erde went down as well just a couple of moments after that but uh, at the front of the field still Yuki Cooney. Barry Baltos from the seventh row of the grid though Fran he's been able to make good progress up into the top ten straight away on the number seven Angel Nieto bike. He has indeed yeah the absolute superstar of Estoril was Baltus and uh, yeah pretty disappointing day for him in qualifying yesterday but again made some serious progress in the early stages of this race and uh, right back in top ten contention again but uh, just quickly going back to Onchu's crash not sure if 
if he has been able to get back in. But uh, it's quite a common one, isn't it, when riders try and hang on to the bike, maybe that little bit too long, that can actually cause more problems than if you do just let it go and accept you're not going to save it and, uh, you know, sort of end up in the gravel a little bit more gracefully than that. Yeah, you always think you can save it, though. And, uh, you do for... indeed. And for some people, such as maybe reigning MotoGP world champion Mark Marquez, you pretty much can. But uh, not all of us can do that. And, uh, yeah, on to, we'll have to see if he's managed to get back in or not. But you can see in the Australia Galicia 0, zero garage down there, a couple of familiar faces of Sergio Garcia and Alonso Lopez there. Come to uh, check out the young guys who are certainly impressive so far in this race. And uh, Yamanaka right up there on the chase behind Cooney. Yeah, Yamanaka on the number six. He's doing his best to make sure that he's the rider in that team that's making the headlines here because he saw in the opening race of the year Danny Halgado on the 96 get himself into those leading positions challenge for the podium but uh, this race very different to what we had in race one this is a leading group of six riders all close together as they come across the line it was Kuni Yamanaka Alcoba Tate Nepa and Halgado at the back of that group as well so all these riders really close to one another it's Archie Gas at the very back of that group that's just been able to stay in touch on the number 24 machine. That's Halgado down the inside. Good clean move from Danny Halgado on 96. He's now up into fourth position once again and trying to just put the pressure on Alcoba as well because Alcoba looks like a rider that's able to defend, able to overtake, but not quite able to set that pace. Yeah, he doesn't seem to quite have the pace of, uh, yeah, certainly Cooney ahead of him or he didn't in race one, but at the moment, yeah, Yamanaka looking uh, fairly serious about uh, this uh, race there in second at the moment and I'm quite surprised that Cooney hasn't been able to pull away too much at the front as it stands just a couple of tenths last time around and as you can see then the number 53 Red Bull KTM IO of Dennis Anshu not sadly back in this race yeah, and for Dennis Anshu, as we said, the disappointment's going to be clear because that's three races, two crashes, one technical problem, but no points for the Turkish rider. And now he's put himself in a massive hole. He'll get another chance to race in Le Mans in a few weeks' time in support of the French Grand Prix. But uh, he's now got himself a big mountain to climb to try and get himself back to championship contention. At the front, though, Yuki Kuni's under attack now from Yamanaka, Japanese riders first and second. And uh, for Yuki Kuni, the race winner from race one. He's now going to need to be the man with the target on his back. He's going to be the man that all these riders are trying to attack. And for Yuki Kuni, we saw him not put a foot wrong in race one when he was under attack from Dennis Anchu, but it's very different when it's one rider versus seven riders now like it is at the front of the field. As Yamanaka tries to run around the outside, he uses the slipstream. Is he able to carry that corner speed? Not quite close enough to be able to force that move. But at the front of the field, Yuki Kuni very much under attack. And Alcoba's right there as well but Alcoba under attack from Halgado. Halgado up into third position on the 96. Good clean move there from Halgado, Fran. Yeah, it was, and it'd be interesting to see now what Alcoba does, but also uh, keep an eye on Cooney at the front to see what the Japanese rider's going to do. He must be aware there's quite a few of them there right behind him, and a very, very different race so far to that which we saw this morning. And uh, Yamanaka certainly looking like he's going to start preparing a move very quickly. Yeah, Yamanaka on the number six just trying to attack. That is uh, the... Jason DePaclier, Koffler, and, and, yeah. and uh, Max Cook. It was Cook that uh, got actually taken out by the other bikes around him. It was uh, DePaclier on number 50 that lost it first. And uh, then Koffler and Cook just didn't seem like they had anywhere to go from that. That was the lap one crash. So plenty of action on those opening couple of laps with Dennis Onshu also crashing out. There was. I was a little bit, oh, we've got Yamanaka. a move here. Yamanaka striking for the race lead. So Cooney, for the first time in quite some time, is not the lead rider on the road. Have to see if he's going to quickly strike back or if those guys behind can uh, make a go of it as well. See, Bill Van Aird, we saw him crash out just after Dennis Onchu uh, back in the garage, but seems okay, which is good, because obviously he did miss Estoril through injury, so at least up and okay is Bill Van Aird. And uh, yeah, Yamanaka now at the front of this little freight train. Yeah, Yamanaka out in front. Good move to take that race lead from Yuki Cooney. And uh, for Yamanaka, he's going to be under attack straight away from Cooney. He uses that slipstream on the number 33 machine to try and attack down in towards turn one. But Danny Halgado is coming through like a freight train as well. Halgado on the 96. Is he going to be close enough trying to attack down into turn one? Of course he is. Sends it down the inside there on the 96. Good performance from the young Spanish rider. And now we've got an Estrada Galicia 1-2 with Yamanaka out in front from his teammate Halgado. And in this leading group of seven, really is getting close. The lap times aren't as fast as what we saw in race one. That's why we're starting to see this group squabble with one another. But Yuki Kuni, he never had to answer too many questions in race one. And uh, now he's going to...
going to have to try and collect himself and get himself back to the front. We're only at one third distance though, so still plenty of action left in this race. There is, and yeah, it's a very, very different race to what we saw this morning. Like I've said, in that race, it was almost take it in turns between Anchu and Cooney. Like, okay, so you can lead for a bit. You've got the whole shot. And uh, then the Japanese rider took over at the front. But then again, Anchu didn't really attack him too much. But uh, yeah, Cooney now having to get his elbows out a little bit. Looks like he's going to go for a move done. Not quite, uh, but you could see them running over that cement dust as well from that problem we had earlier in Moto2. And this is the danger, of course, for Cooney. If you do get attacked, it's not only one guy who's going to try and get past you. It also uh, ends up opening the door for everyone to start uh, really beating you up here. The Japanese rider will have to be careful if you just think he's got the pace again like he did this morning, that he doesn't fall too far back in this squabble. Yeah, Carlos Tate on the 99 trying to attack as well. Out in front, though, it is still the Estrada Galicia bikes with Yamanaka just trying to open up a little bit of a lead, but you can see there for Cooney, good exit down onto the start finish straight. He's going to try and use the slipstream there from Halgado, and he should be able to try and attack down in towards turn one. You can see behind them, though, it is still a case of the 99 trying to attack as well with Carlos Tate, but the 33 gets down the inside. He's actually going to try and take the lead as well there from Yuki Cooney. Third to first, nice and easy for Cooney. Uses the slipstream, gets down the inside, but is he going to be under attack straight away down in towards turn two? It looks like Halgado on the 96 gets down the inside of his teammate. Halgado's not afraid to get his elbows out. If he's able to sense any opportunity to take this lead, he's going to try and jump through, but uh, Yamanaka doing a good job just to be able to still hold on to that second position. You can see the 24 there of Artigas just trying to be a little bit aggressive with these riders. They're all tripping up over one another, which is always a sign that you're not quite on the limit of your speed just whenever a group starts to attack one another like this. And all that that's done, Fran, is it's brought Barry Baltus and uh, Alex Wu back into this field as well. Yeah, it really has. And like you said, they're all tripping up over each other a little bit. But certainly behind Cooney, once he was uh, back at the front, he couldn't have scripted that better for the guys just behind him. Gave him just that little bit of space and the Australia Galicia guys able to uh, just uh, keep tabs on him just about. But uh, certainly those guys behind lost a bit of time there. Yeah, and you can see how hard Cooney was pushing through that section as well. He's trying to open up a bit of a gap. He's trying to splinter this group once again, just like what we saw in race one. Yamanak is going with him. So that's really positive for the number six. The two Japanese riders, first and second in this race. We saw Jared Ryu came into the pits there as well. So second retirement for the day for Ryu on that number 67 machine. Down in towards the final corner, you can see that it is Yuki Kuni leading the way as they come across the start finish line. Just through one third distance of this race. So still plenty to go for all these riders. But the 33 back out in front. The gap between himself, Yamanaka and Halgada, it's round about a half a second. And the, that's one of the Andreas Perez bikes that's gone down, and uh, that could be Carlos Tate. I think it's Tatai, yeah, he's going down the timing screen, so it looks like Tatai is a, a bit of a disaster day, it continues sadly in race two, but obviously the Spaniard looked up and okay, so that's important. Yeah, disappointment there for Carlos Tate, he had been in that front group, just seeing a track limits warning as well for Stefano Napa, so keep an eye on the 82 to see whether or not he runs wide again, because if he does, he could get a penalty for that. We've seen riders in the ETC in particular getting that long lap penalty so the race direction being very much on the ball for that at the front of the field though the two Japanese riders Cooney and Yamanaka just starting to stretch out a little bit of a lead over Danny Halgado but Halgado doing what he can to dig in as well Fran he's trying to make sure he stays with those two race leaders he definitely is and he's at least making sure that at the moment he's out of the clutches of that little squabbling group of riders behind him that's at the moment headed up by Xavier Artigas I think on that Leopard machine but uh, yeah at the moment Yamanaka seems to be able to stay within strength in distance of Cooney at least so that'll be a really uh, yeah really good sign for the for the young Japanese rider and uh, Holgado at the moment just trying to hang in there like you said and uh have to see how this develops. How good of a sign is it as well, Fran, that for the European Talent Cup, that riders can make that step up like Halgado and Artigas to be able to fight at the front in the Moto3 Junior World Championship really is impressive and shows that those riders can use that as a real stepping stone. Absolutely. And the thing is, although this field has uh, got an awful lot of rookies on the grid this year, we do still have the likes of Cooney, who has beaten the likes of Raul Fernandez, for example, who've now moved up and uh, really 
really shown that they are top quality rookies in the Moto3 World Championship as well. So they do have some good barometers against which they can measure their level. Uh, and Cooney's certainly one of them. And at the moment, yeah, really, really great performance from the likes of Holgado and Artigas to be right up in here uh, in this battle. Yeah, really good stuff. And uh, as you said, there are still those yardsticks, the barometers with which you can measure riders just by comparison of who they raced in the past. Yuki Cooney, of course, race winner last season in Jerez, race winner this morning in race one here at Valencia, but he's under pressure here for this race victory in race two. It's Yamanaka that's right behind him, and Yamanaka, of course, Fran, he's, been, he's out to try and make sure that he's able to still be the leader of that Estrella Galicia team. There's nothing like it for a rider that's going to motivate you more than being under pressure from a teammate. He's been under pressure from his teammate, and now he's trying to make sure he's able to bounce back. You can see Mahadi just getting a lift back to the pit, so out of this race for Mahadi. Yeah, like you were saying, Yamanaka, is, uh, yeah, it's time for him to stamp a little bit of authority back on Daniel Holgado, I think, this afternoon after the young Spaniard was so, so impressive, as we keep repeating. I'm sorry, if you, if for some reason you're not a fan of Daniel Holgado, we promise it's not the Holgado channel the whole time, but it uh, really can't be overstated how much him and Artigas really are impressing uh, today. But uh, yeah, Yamanaka certainly looks to be taking the fight to Cooney at the moment and pretty determined to uh, flip the tables this time around. Yeah, and you can see Artigas under attack there as well from Alcoba, Alcoba taking over that fourth position now, but uh, as you said Fran, for all of these riders, lots of experienced riders, but lots of rookies as well, and it's strange, when you look at uh, Yamanaki, you think of him as being an experienced rider, he's only got half a dozen starts in the Moto3 class here, in the Junior World Championship, but he's a rider that we've seen over the last few years, a rider that we've seen develop an awful lot, and a race winner in this class uh, sorry, he's been a, a guy in those leading groups in this class in the past so for Yamanaka, now really just making sure that he's able to try and challenge for those podiums, try and challenge for those race wins, because coming into this weekend only half a dozen riders in this field had actually stood on a CEV Moto3 podium. Exactly, there is a little bit of a power vacuum in some ways in this championship this year, and yet yeah, the likes of Yamanaka will be uh, very, very keen to start to fill it, and uh, he is obviously uh, been in the Red Bull rookies as well, like Cooney has, and he was sixth overall in the rookies last year, and did win a race there uh, at the Red Bull ring, I think in Austria, so uh, yeah he's had some, uh, some impressive performances performances and obviously wins uh, in another paddock but uh, looking like he really really wants to break that duck here now but like you say it's a very familiar name for those of us who watch all of these different incredible road to moto gp or more junior kind of championships to see these guys but uh, yeah is uh, not got that much experience compared to cuny and compared to the likes of alcoba who's now uh, yeah back in the head of that train at the uh, second group there i'll have to see if his tactics remain similar to this morning and just uh, defend that for all his work yeah, Alcoba with a nice clean move down the inside of the double right-handers in the middle of the lap here in Valencia to take over that third position. The gap between Alcoba and the race leaders started this lap at 1.1 seconds. Let's see what it is as they come across the line now. Yuki Kuni out in front from Yamanaka and the gap between them and the man in third who is Jeremy Alcoba on the number 52. Let's see what it is as they come across the line. It stays the same, so 1.1 seconds is that gap and it's staying pretty constant. So Alcoba, he knows he needs to bridge that gap now. He needs to start close closing in on Yamanaka on that number six machine. And uh, for Yamanaka and for Cooney, they know exactly what they need to do as well. They need to keep their pace consistent. They need to keep their pace in those mid one minute 40 laps and see if you're able just to try and keep out in front. You want to make sure that you're not fighting a battle on multiple fronts. If you're able to focus on just one rider at the end of these races, that gives you such a big advantage. We saw that in the fight for the podium spots in race one. We saw how easy it is to get yourself tripped up by other riders. We saw how easy it is to get yourself caught out with your strategy as well, Fran, because in these Moto3 races, it really does just come down to strategy. Yeah, exactly. And if you have one other guy in that duel with you for the win, obviously you focus completely on either attacking or defending and none of the chaos that the classic Moto3 group squabbles can bring. But uh, at the moment, yeah, like we said, that gap was fairly constant last time around. But uh, at the moment, Alcoba seems to be fairly comfortably at the head of that second group. So they've not lost too much time, it would seem, on this lap. But we'll have to check again when they uh, head over the line. But certainly Alcoba at the moment has seemed to have been followed through by Nepa. And you can see Holgado there, the ground he's lost in that group. Quite a few positions there the young Spaniard has dropped. Yeah, dropped to the back of that group with Aleix View and also Barry Baltas, the uh, race winner from Estoril, having got themselves through in that group as well. It's the two Angel Nieto riders just starting to, for the first time this weekend, show their pace at the front of the field as well. So keep an eye out for the number seven and also 81. But uh, you can see there with the 82 of Nepa, he's going to come on pressure now from 
Javier Artigas then in towards turn one. Artigas is going to try and probably make a run on Alcoba as well. Not quite close enough to get an attack on Alcoba, but he is close enough to attack on Nepa down in towards turn one. And Artigas is able to pick up that position and that should put him up into fourth spot right now. But Nepa is going to try and uh, run around the outside. Not quite able to carry that speed. So good move from Artigas on that uh, number 24 machine to be able to hold on to fourth position. It was, and you can see there top left on your screens that gap 1.130 the gap between Yamanaka and Alcoba as it is the man on the chase but at the moment yeah not too much change there so uh, it'll be fairly interesting if those guys don't squabble too much and Yamanaka obviously is perfectly content to sit behind Cooney and uh, make sure at the moment it's a race of two for this victory this afternoon but uh, looks like now Alcoba just might be pulling the pin a little bit and uh, now we're going to have another squabble as you can see Nepa yo-yoing between second in that group and then losing out again and uh, they're going to only lose themselves time if they do this too much. Yeah and for Napa we've seen him get to the front of that group, drop himself down, get himself back up as well but we're coming up towards the final third of this race so this really is when you need to start asserting yourself in that group as well. That's where you can see from the likes of the two Angel Nieto riders to have come through from the middle of the pack as well. Bal Baltos from the seventh row of the group. It shows the kind of pace that he has and then he's trying to make those moves try and assert yourself, try and make sure that everyone around you knows that you're the rider to watch in that group, try and get yourself to the front of it put yourself in the best position to be able to dictate the strategy because in racing Fran you're either applying pressure or you're under pressure and you want to be the rider on, racing on the front foot like Artigas on the 24 able to get himself through into third position now as well good riding there from the Leopard rider yeah, and uh, obviously last time around couldn't quite get that move done into turn one. So a bit of a different tactic from the reigning European Talent Cup champion that time around. And uh, yeah, Holgado looks like he's quite eager to try and follow him through, but not quite able to uh, do anything about Nepa that time around. And uh, yeah, that gap last time around, just that little bit bigger between the front duo and those guys. So about 1.4 between Yamanaka and uh, Artigas as it was then over the line. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting if these guys can just start to eat out tenth by tenth it makes a big difference over several laps yeah and the big reason for that is Alcoba was actually about three or four tenths of a second slower last lap around he was at the front of that group he through was. that lap so it was Alcoba once again it was just struggling to match the pace of those race leaders we saw it in race one as well Alcoba though with a wise head in his shoulders was able to come away with 20 points on a race where realistically he wasn't the second fastest rider out there so keep an eye out for how clever Alcoba is he's one of the most experienced riders in the field one of the most experienced riders in CEV Moto3 history as well with almost as many starts as any other rider so he's a rider that knows exactly where he needs to put his bike at different points on the track you can see Stefano Nepa on that number 82 machine just trying to get a run around this long left hander as well so Nepa with a dozen starts in the Moto3 World Championship he's got a lot of experience as well and he's trying to use that to make sure he finishes up there on the podium but as it stands right now it is Javier Artigas that's up there in third position on that final step of the podium the gap between that man Artigas on the 24 machine and the number six of y Yamanaka it's stretched out to 1.7 seconds now so those two race leaders they're gone now we've got this fight just for the podium spots yeah, it would seem they have it. It looked a few times on that lap like Yamanaka was just starting to lose a little bit of ground to Cooney. But he's closed up another couple of bike lengths again there, certainly down into turn one and on the straight with uh, that slipstream. So uh, certainly just about able to hang in there at the moment. But Artiga still at the front of this group now. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with him as well. Like we've mentioned Holgado a lot, but Artiga's another in a similar boat. And yeah, like we said, Alcoba, very, very, very experienced CV Moto3 rider. And these guys are uh, well in the mix with him. Yeah, the pace not too hot in that scrap for third position. That's why they've dropped off the back of Yamanaka. If you look at the lap times for that group, they're all around about a half a second off their fastest laps. So they are starting to get into a little bit of strategy, a little bit of just trying to test the other riders around them. They're not trying to have that flat out blast just yet. But with four and a half laps to go, they're eventually going to have to really show their potential, eventually going to have to show the true speed and eventually really have that uh, scrap. You can see there with Halgado, he had to run a little bit wide on the entry. He carried a little bit too much speed on the way in and uh, just got caught out a little bit by Alcoba. But good recovery to be able just to run around that outside. Nepa is still up there, fourth in that train, which means he's uh, fifth, sixth on the, on the racetrack as well. So for the likes of Alcoba in that... Uh, on the 52 machine, just trying to make sure he puts his bike in the right place, but Artigas is riding really well. You can see the Angel Nieto bikes just trying to have a dust up there with 
Davide Pizzoli as well, and it looks like one of the Angel Nieto bikes has gone through. I'd say that's a late view, and you're going to see that Barry Baltos is going to try and follow through with that slipstream down across the line in towards turn one. You can see, though, it's still Javier Artigas that's leading this group in the fight for the podium spots. Bit of a run through turn one there for Halgado. Is he close enough to try and attack down in towards turn two on Alcoba? The two race leaders come through that, and Yamanaka really has been able to go right back to Yuki Kuni. Those two riders out in front. The race victory is going to come down to their scrap, but what's happening in that fight for third position? Because just behind them, it did look like there was the potential for a few changes there in that group. We'll see if we can get a flash of that fight for third. It looks like it is still Alcoba that's held on to fourth position. He's just behind Artigas. Yeah, it looks like Altigas just got a little bit of breathing space as well at the moment. But yeah, Alcoba surviving that attack. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. This keeps at the front. This gap seems to uh, change corner by corner almost. It looks like, oh no, Yamanaka's starting to lose out now. And then it'll get back onto the onto the uh, back of Cooney's bike again. But uh, certainly for Cooney in the lead, it looks fairly effortless at this point. The uh, Japanese rider just absolutely immovable and uh, leading this race with confidence and poise, as he did, of course, this morning. So be a big ask for Yamanaka to try and take him on and beat him, but uh, also be an impressive result to take a podium and to even have stayed with Cooney and have a chance at an attack in the latter stages of this race. Yeah, and Yamanaka doing a really good job here just to stay with Cooney because Cooney's pace all the way through this race has been pretty consistent. He's been within a tenth of a second of his fastest lap pretty much for the entire race. So Cooney on the 33, he's been really consistent like a metronome. And uh, for Yamanaka to go with him, that's impressive as well. This is only his seventh start. Exactly, yeah. CB really World impressive Street. result. Even if he just follows him over the line, it's uh, still a very, very good day's work for Yamanaka. But I'm sure he will not be content for that at all. And uh, we'll hopefully get some uh, fireworks at the end of this race. But uh, certainly the front duo are keeping it nice and calm at the moment. But that battle just behind them at the moment looks like it's really heating up now. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to have some changes of position in that scrap for third. It looks like Nepa has been able to get himself up through as well. And uh, he's just trying to make sure he's able to stay in contention. You can see Alcoba just retaking that uh, position as well. Fourth position there from Halgado. And uh, all of these riders, now they're starting to get themselves into a little bit of a battle. Is that giving Xavier Artigas a little bit of a gap to try and stretch out? You can see there from the live championship standings, optimistic at this stage of the season if you think about the championship, but Yuki Kuni has to be thinking about it all the way through this season as well. You can see though for Javier Ortigas through what is two rounds of this championship, just showing how impressive the reigning ETC champion is to be able to run in these podium spots in this race. And uh, Barry Baltos, the race winner from Estoril, tries to get down the inside of Napa. Nice clean move through there from the number seven Angel Nieto rider, but he runs wide on the exit. <laughs> and uh, for Barry Baltos, Altos, you can see what he's having to do though, Fran. That group's starting to splinter. You need to make sure that you're able to get to the front of it. And it looks like you might have ran through on that chicane. Yeah, as well. that looks like a little bit of an interesting racing line from Baltus through there. But certainly those uh, Aspar Al Khanyata team, Sama Qatar Al Khanyata team, whichever name you wish to, to use to uh, make sure you know who we're talking about. Those guys certainly uh, pretty feisty in this group. Some uh, great moves from those two. But Baltus, yeah, maybe getting close to the limit there and uh, have to be a little bit careful. He doesn't to cut the track at all but view now homing in on Daniel Helgado and uh, yeah better performance from him in this race certainly an uh, improvement on the morning yeah Leish view just moving himself up into that podium scrap as well just seeing that there is a long lap penalty has been given to number 82 that's Stefano Nepa it is indeed who so we've seen get some warnings already but he was actually overtaken by Barry ba Barry as uh, Boltus was on the outside of that track as well so both those riders really scrapping with each other but uh, unfortunate for Nepa because he's in that uh, scrap for the podium. He's going to drop to the back of that group. That group is splintering, though, but this front group certainly is in the battle for the race when it's going to go right down to the wire. We've got a lap and a half to go. Yuki Kuni's trying to add to his race victory in this morning's race here in Valencia. Yamanaka's trying to make, pick up his first ever CEV Moto3 victory, and he's doing a really good job here, Fran. You mentioned that he's already a Red Bull Rookies race winner. He knows how to win races in tough competition, but there's something different about the CEV Moto3 championship as well. There is. It's one of the most challenging paddocks for these guys as they're trying to make their way to the MotoGP paddock and uh, Yamanaka doing an absolutely sterling job today to uh, yeah, even be in the same postcode as Cooney after the uh, performance of the uh, old Japanese rider this morning
morning. Really, really good stuff to see. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I think it's going to get fairly spicy on the final lap between these two now. He's obviously not going to be able to drop him unless he's got some serious lap time in his pocket once we're on the final lap. Yeah, we saw Yamanaka have a look over his shoulder as he came through the stadium section there. He wanted to make sure he knew who was behind him. And uh, now you can see for Yamanaka, he knows it's a straight-up fight between himself and Cooney. Is he going to be close enough to try and attack down in towards turn one? He looks like he's got that slipstream, but he actually bails out of that. He doesn't try and make the move into turn one. Where is he going to set up his move? You can see here with the 52 of Jeremy Alcoba, he's been able to set up his move down in towards turn one. Once again, we saw in race one, he was able to come good at the end of the race, use his experience to get to the front of the field. Halgado down the inside of Artigas, and Halgado up into fourth position once again. He's trying to claim his first podium in the CEV Moto3 Championship. And uh, at the front of the field, the number six of Yamanaka is trying to claim his first race victory in this class. As it stands right now, Jeremy Alcoba, has he timed it to perfection? Just seeing again for uh, Stefano Napa still needing to take that long lap penalty. But uh, for all these riders now in this scrap, you can see the 81 of Alish View getting down the inside. He knows he needs to try and make these moves pretty quickly. View with lots of experience this year in the Moto3 World Championship. He needs to make sure he's able to use that to maximum effect on this final lap of the race. You keep Kuni out in front though on the 33 and for Yuki Kuni he's trying to make sure that he's able to use the experience of being the only multiple race winner in this leading group. Yamanaka is chasing that first race victory in the CEV Moto3 class. He's going to have to make his move on the last corner. We're on the last lap now coming in towards the last section down in towards the uphill section that leads into the long left hander at turn 13. You can see how hard Yuki Kuni's pushing but he's got Yamanaka right there behind him the two Japanese riders first and second who's going to come out of this one on top it looks like Yamanaka is trying to get down the inside and he does make the move stick. Yuki Kuni has to see that and it looks like Yamanaka is going to be able to come across the line here. The Estrella Galicia rider able to claim his first CV Moto3 Championship victory and Yamanaka times that to perfection. Behind them though, it's his teammate Halgado that's able to finish on the podium in third spot just in front of Xavier Artigas. The two European Talent Cup riders having made this step up and in the, the opening race weekend of his CV Moto3 career, Danny Halgado with a fourth and a third but his teammate Yamanaka able to claim that race victory great stuff from Yamanaka timed it to perfection on that last lap did Rio Yamanaka and he was able to make the move on the very last corner and you can see they're able to celebrate with his teammate he tells his teammate he won the race and uh, Halgado says he finished third that's as good as it gets for the Estrada Galicia team that's Stefano Nepa offering his congratulations as well but uh, for Yamanaka to be able to take that victory really strong stuff to be able to bully Yuki Kuni on that last lap of the race and uh, it came down to a straight up fight Kuni did what he could to try and stay out in front but Yamanaka able to make this move down the inside just sends it down the inside we've seen that move made plenty of times in Valencia across MotoGP Moto2 Moto3 classes and now we see it once again in the CEV Moto3 class there's the Estrella Galicia team they're able to view that move in live time in, on the screen as well and they can see just how good that move was and what it means for that team great race victory there for Yamanaka Yuki Kuni able to back up his race victory from this morning with second. So another 20 championship points there for Yuki Kuni, 45 from today. And uh, not a bad return at all for Yuki Kuni. If you think back to last time out in Estoril, he didn't score any points and uh, able to at least come away from this round with 45 points. But uh, Yuki Kuni, we saw in the live championship standings that he would have been the championship leader, but... Uh, probably it will be the likes of Artigas able to challenge for that now as well but uh, through two rounds these riders are going to have to wait until Le Mans in a few weeks time where they'll support the MotoGP World Championship and have a one-off race on the Saturday afternoon and this really is an opportunity for them once again to showcase just how good they are in front of a massive audience in front of all of the MotoGP team bosses and really make a name for themselves but Yamanaka in only a seventh start in the CEV Moto3 Junior World Championship able to claim this race victory and uh, he joins the likes of Alcoba, Aleish View, Yuki Kuni and Barry Baltas as the only race winners in this field and uh, really strong performance from Yamanaka. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do for the rest of the season. That race victory is going to give him a lot of confidence. 
get some congratulations there for the 19. That's Victor Rodriguez. His brother's going to be in action in the European Talent Cup in a little while once again here in Valencia. But uh, you can see for Yamanak as he revs that bike, comes back into pit lane and uh, gets the congratulations from his mechanics. You can see exactly what it means for him and also for that Estrella Galicia team as well. And uh, for Yamanaka, he, uh, I'll tell you what, he deserves all the applause he's going to get because he timed that move to perfection. Goes over and gets the congratulations from his team. And uh, for Yamanaka, that's going to mean so much for him just to have proven exactly what he could do. As Fran said, lots of the uh, former Estrada Galicia Moto3 Junior World Championship riders down here in the paddock this weekend as well. And uh, they're going to have to keep an eye on Yamanaka going forward because that was such a smart ride. And uh, we said earlier on that Yuki Kuni was able to keep a cool head. He was able to make sure that he was able to put his bike in the right place at the right time. But in race two, he couldn't defend from Yamanaka because Yamanaka just timed that absolutely perfectly. Be interesting to see what the race vector has to say whenever we hear from him down in Park Fermi. That's his teammate there as well, Danny Halgado. And not a bad birthday weekend for Halgado. He only turned 14 yesterday. He was too young to race at the opening round of the season in Estoril. But I'll tell you what, he looks like he's perfectly mature enough to be able to contend in the CEV Moto3 Junior World Championship. Really strong debut weekend for him. Fourth and third in the two races. And he looks like a rider that we're going to have to keep our eye on through the course of this season. We heard during the race from Fran just talking about how many rookies there are in the class. Those rookies have a chance to make a real name for themselves this year because there is that chance to be able to really assert yourself in this class. Lots of riders stepping up from the Junior Moto3 World Championship and uh, onto whether it's Moto2 here in CEV or onto the Grand Prix grid. And now those younger riders get a real opportunity to show exactly what they can do. And uh, for Halgado, for Xavier Artigas, we were able to see exactly how good they can be this weekend as well. This is the run to the line for Yamanaka. This is where we're going to see him celebrate his first ever victory in the FIM CV Moto3 Junior World Championship. Really good stuff from the number six. And we should be able to hear from him down in Park Fermi with Fram Wild. So Reese, that was an incredible race and an incredible win right down to the final corner. How does that feel? Yes, Kunimazu this weekend is very strong. That's why if I I'm I'm not so bad I'm no good for pacing. So that's why I'm my strategy is waiting, 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 and I searching his uh, loose corner, and finally last corner <laughs> I overtake and perfect win. Thank you, thank you, gracias, gracias, team. Thank you. And also some words in Japanese, please. Eto, eto, sebu de no eto race nan desu kedo hatsu yushou sukoto dekimashita. Eto, konshu yukou toshite, ma iroiro na. ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジャパンがすごく良かったです。ジ
caught out in those final stages and uh, dropped down to seventh position at the flag. But uh, at the front of the field, you could see once again, it was still those two riders stretching away. Behind them, though, it was all action all the way. But in those final couple of laps, the race started to settle down and we started to see these groups start to splinter out. That scrap for the final podium spot just eventually would become a four rider, rider battle. You can see here with Alcoba just trying to get down the inside. This is the final corner of the race. So great run through turn 13 for Rio Yamanaka and he gets down the inside into 14 and uh, just make sure to make that move on Yuki Kuni. You could see how happy he was to have been able to claim that first CEV Moto3 Junior World Championship race victory. And you can see how happy his team were to be able to claim their first victory of the season as well. But Yamanaka with a splendid performance to be able to get himself through to the front. And Yamanaka claiming the race victory here in race two in Valencia, just in front of Yuki Kuni. Kuni able to back up his race, race victory from race one with another 20 points for finishing second in the champ in this los cuatro race. protagonistas de la segunda manga de la carrera de Moto3. So we'll be able to see the top three come on to the podium now. Junior. Yamanaka, he'll be on the top step of the podium alongside his teammate Daniel Halgado and Yuki Kuni up there as well for the second time today. But uh, for Yamanaka, really impressive race, really smart riding to be able to get himself to the front of the field and he thoroughly deserves those 25 championship points. Team representative just getting the team's trophy for this race victory. Two riders on the podium for the Australia Galicia team and uh, for Yamanaka and Holgado, really good to see them back on form. Yamanaka knew that he needed to answer back in this race, he needed to reassert himself because this man, Danny Halgado, on his debut weekend in the CEV, Junior World Championship, he's been able to make that step onto the podium as well. So third position there for Halgado, backing up his fourth in race one. Second position for Yuki Kuni, and Kuni was able to have a really strong race once again, but just got outfoxed on that last lap. But uh, with Yamanaka having such a good run through turn 13, down in towards the last corner, he left it late, but he's able to claim the race victory here in his first ever race victory in the CEV Moto3 Junior World Championship. And uh, very well-deserved applause there for the Japanese rider. He'll be on top of the world until the next race in Le Mans in a few weeks' time in support of the the French Moto Grand Prix. But now we'll get the opportunity to hear the Japanese national anthem for the second time today in the Moto 3 class. Un aplauso para los cuatro, para Raúl, para Daniel, Yuki. Yamanaka claiming the race victory. Yuki Kuni claimed the victory in race one. For these riders, they now get themselves ready for round three of the championship in Le Mans. And uh, this really was an absolute barnstormer from Yamanaka to get himself through to claim that race victory. It looked like Yuki Kuni had done enough but uh, not quite able to hold on to that race victory for Amwell. He was not. That final corner, yeah, great move from Yamanaka and uh, great tactics. He said he didn't have the pace, so his uh, option was really just waiting and desperately trying to hang on to Cooney and uh, then, yeah, attacking right at the end there and, uh, yeah, worked to treat, didn't it? Yeah, perfectly for Yamanaka to take that race victory just in front of Cooney. Halgado was able to come out on top of that fight with Artigas and Aleish View finishing inside the top five to round out what's been a pretty disappointing weekend for him, but at least he's been able to come through the field here in race two and score some decent points. You can see down the orders, Victor Rodriguez was the last point scoring rider as he came across the line, but uh, for Akari Arita, at least we were able to see him get through a race cleanly and uh, he'll be able to try and recover from that in uh, Le Mans and just uh, show exactly what he can do. There was plenty of crashes in this race as well, plenty of retirements and some real big names out of this race. None more so than Dennis Onshu, you can see down there. And Onshu with no points through these opening three races of the year. Billy Van Erde as well, the reigning Asia Talent Cup champion, he crashed out of this race. And then there was that big crash with Coupe de Pasquier and also Koffler in the early stages of the race. For these riders though, 
until they get the chance to go back in action at Le Mans. It will be Yuki Kuni that leads the way, but only by a point from Javier Artigas. And then Barry Boltos, the race winner from Estoril, level on points with Alcoba Yamanaka, moving himself up into the top five. Danny Halgado, though the debutant, able to move himself up into the top six in the championship standings. A late view, as we said, a rider with Moto3 World Championship experience this year inside the top ten. He'll be looking to try and make sure he's able to make a step forward at Le Mans on the 18th of May when the CEV Junior uh, World Championship riders get themselves back out on track. But you can see all the way down the order, he'll be waiting a long time to see Dennis Onchu. No points on the board for the Turkish rider. And uh, he'll have to try and make sure his season starts properly next time out in Le Mans. He will indeed. And on the big stage there, of course, uh, so uh, plenty of pressure for that fourth race of the season for Onchu. Just uh, hope he's all okay after that crash. And uh, yeah, you see uh, Ryan van der Laagmark with one point from Estoril is the final man to have scored so far. But uh, some pretty up and down, uh, up and down campaign so far for some riders that we thought maybe would be a little bit further up. But uh, the likes of H uh, Ruki Noguchi we saw there um, scored some points today. So uh, that's good for him after missing that first round in Estoril, certainly. But uh, rookie teammate and uh, yeah, former ATC rival Billy Van Erde obviously crashing out of that one and uh, sadly not able to score. So we'll see more in Le Mans.